So here's another project. Uh, so a friend of mine's got a lab and he was trying to control the temperature and the humidity in a room. Uh, and he had a little ceramic space heater. But the problem with the heater was is the thermistor in it probably had a 10 degree range on it. So when it would click on and off, uh, it was just so out of whack. Uh, and he wanted something a little bit more pers 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 precise. So what I proposed that we do is we build one of these here, which is a little microcontroller, and I'll show you here in a second. Uh, on the top here, an ESP8266 uh, ESP01 form factor. And then inside this gag box, I've got a relay, and then I've got this temperature humidity sensor, a DHT22, uh, which is pretty accurate, but also does temperature and humidity, so we can log both of them. And then this is all packaged up in just a, a regular 20 cent gag box from the hardware store with an outlet. So that's what I've got. Uh, let's take a look at each of the parts. So the brains behind it is this ESP01. And so this is a microcontroller with a full Wi-Fi stack. Uh, these are super cheap, like a, like a buck or two bucks. And this uh, is, can be programmed with the Arduino IDE. And then I built this little bro board here that kind of exposes the uh, pins it's just because this doesn't have any power supply or anything like that on it. So what I've done is on the left, I have um, a voltage regulator. Um, this is an LM317. And that way we can bring in whatever we want. I'm gonna run this off of a five volt USB plug, uh, but it could be a nine volt or anything else. Uh, and then it runs through the voltage regulator to kick it down to 3.3 and then this microcontroller plugs right in here to those little headers uh, that way it can be taken out for programming and then I've exposed both of the GPIO 02 and 00 pins uh, just through these two different headers and because I'm running a relay and a relay requires 5 volts I've got this 5 volt header across the top so if we flip this over you'll see that 5 volt just comes right straight from the USB uh, and it does, and that way we can run anything that needs 5 volt as long as we can support it with a 3.3 data line. So this little board is stuck right on the top of that gag box. And then inside the gag box I've got a regular outlet. These cost about 50 cents at the hardware store. I've got mine just set in there uh, and screwed it in. And there are these tabs on here that if you break these tabs we can break out two different circuits so we can have uh, power to one and then the other running through the relay. Uh, mine actually has have both of them running through the relay. Underneath the electrical outlet, the receptacle, I do have one of these which is a relay. Now this is a 5 volt in relay so on the left here we can plug it into the microcontroller and then on the right we can plug this into the high voltage. Uh, in this case it's 110 volts. Now this relay is rated 200, uh, 10 amps at 250 volts AC, so more than enough to run a little space heater. So I have this velcroed and stuck to the bottom of the gag box just so that it doesn't come loose, and then I expose these pins out the side. Or I'll show you that here in a second. So at the bottom of the gag box I've got that relay, and you can just see the velcro stuck there just so it doesn't bounce around. And then I wrote on it what the connectors were just because uh, I, I can't see them once it's in there, and if this got unplugged, I need to know how to plug it back in. And uh, then I also wrote above here just what the order was, so the color of my ribbon cable or my uh, power cable, and then also what the values are. So this comes out and just gets plugged into the microcontroller, uh, and on this case, on the one plugged to the side, it's going into this one here with the 5 volts. So this is the side of it. You can see how it's set up. Uh, it looks just like the one in the prototype board, uh, but with this power cable. Now this is actually a power cable from an old uh, um, power strip that wasn't working anymore. Uh, so it's super beefy, uh, which also means it's a little hard to bend around. So I've got my relay plugged in here, and then I've got my uh, DHT22 plugged in here, and I just have a little bit of a long cable on it so that this can be mounted a little bit further away from the receptacle as well as the heater. Uh, and then I've just got it uh, screwed onto the side here so it doesn't come loose. And this does actually come out if we need to reprogram it, which of course I've done dozens of times at this point. So I've just got this power tester plugged in right now and you'll see it's currently on, which means the temperature is below the set value. So if I warm this up just a little bit, it should go off. It does check every 10 seconds to see if the relay should be on or off. Um, so it's pretty responsive. And I've got it set to about a half a degree uh, temperature difference within it. Now one of the things that I have noticed, and I don't know if it's this specific DHT22, 
or all of them in general, but it does return an error some of the times when, you're, when you sample it. Um, and it seems to be a pretty high failure rate, but at every 10 seconds, it doesn't really matter. It always recovers within one or two cycles. So you can see that the light just went out on the tester, indicating the relay just got turned off. So it's now hit the maximum temperature, and now it'll wait until it gets uh, cold enough to turn it back on again. So that's the entire device. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Arduino code that's used to control the controller and the relay. And then let's also take a look at the dashboard that I created. And I did two different dashboards, uh, one within a Node-RED server with my own MQTT server, and then a separate one I'm just using uh, a, sys a platform called uh, ThingSpeak, which allows me to very easily program uh, Internet of Things device. But the downside to the ThingSpeak is there wasn't an easy way to set the temperature. So in that particular case, this device will also go into uh, a little bit of a web server mode. And so you can use your phone if you're on the same network to log in and then set the temperature, the high temperature, the, on, uh, the essentially the low temperature, the on temperature, and then the high temperature, the off temperature. Um, but before we take a look at that, let's take a quick look at the circuit. All right, let's take a quick look at the circuit diagram. So we've got five volts from USB. It's powering the LM317 linear voltage regulator, and it's also powering the relay. Now the relay won't work off of 3.3 volts, so we have to use five volts here. Now it will respond to a 3.3 data line coming in to turn it on and off, so that part's not an issue. We just need the five volts in order to power the relay itself. The DHT22 does require a 4.7K pull-up resistor, so I've got that hooked up to my data line, or to my 3.3 volt um, power as well. And then that is hooked up into GPIO02, and the relay is in 0 Then I've got my various resistors here in order to get to 3.3 volts. So that's the circuit diagram. Let's take a quick look at the dashboard and the Arduino code. All right, so let's take a quick look at the code. I've got the DHT uh, sensor set up on pin two. Then I have the relay on pin zero. If you remember those from the diagram. I've got this maximum temperature off and on, uh, and these are just some high uh, values so that the sensor never gets out of range. So if something drastic were to happen, uh, this will always um, shut the relays off so that uh, it can't do any, any uh, permanent damage if anything bad happens. I have two different dashboards that this is feeding. The first, it's going into an MQTT server with a node red dashboard, and I'll show you that as well. The second is I'm using this ThingSpeak dashboard. This is just a, a very great Internet of Things platform. It's very easy to use and to push data in. I'll show you where that's at here in a minute as well. And then because I needed a little local web server where you could change and set the temperature uh, remote or locally within the facility, I've got it set up to service as a web page and uh, or a little web server and it'll serve up this web page and very very simple HTML that'll just allow you to come in and submit the on and off temperature. I'm not going to show that particular dashboard. I'll show you another spot where we're also setting it but all this does is sets the um, high temperature, low temperature and then it also shows the last reading. Uh, and this, because it's running on the device, it goes ahead and just sets it locally and then also submits it into the MQTT server so that when the device gets rebooted, it'll pull down the most recent value. This project, just like many of them uh, that I've built, is using this sensor base class. Uh, now, I took a lot of the common code that gets reused and I just put it into this base class so then I can just reuse it from one project to the next. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the a GitHub page that has this if you want to use it. Uh, but it's very, very straightforward. Uh, it, it just has a few things set up in it, uh, being able to get connected with the, the wireless, the Wi-Fi. It uses the Wi-Fi manager, sets up the MQTT server. Then I also have a few just helper functions just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, you definitely don't need to use this. It just uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for, from my code when I'm going and doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but you can just as easily do this yourself. Within our begin, we're just doing some setups with the MQTT server. We're subscribing to a few of these, uh, the switch, the on off temperature for the switch. And then I'm also doing this switch refresh. So if I want to send down and force the device to tell me what it's doing, uh, I can use that as well. Right here, we're just setting up the little local web server. Uh, it doesn't do anything overly fancy. It just has the one service and it redirects it back to this web root 
and you'll see right here the web root doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, it authenticates if the username and password doesn't, uh, hasn't been submitted, it asks for them. Uh, and then if they are submitted, it goes ahead and checks the number of arguments. If there are none, um, it just goes ahead and displays the page. If there are, it sets up and just submits it into the MQTT server. This is persistent. Uh, this is going to remember the state value when the device reboots. So this is one easy way to store a value, but not on the device. So this will work regardless of which chip um, or which socket I'm using. And it'll also work across boots or if I take it to a different facility. It just doesn't really matter. So this is an easy way to save those values. So here's our loop. I've got the couple handlers set up and then every 10 seconds it checks the sensor and it checks the relay. And then every one minute it logs that data. Uh, now I do have a couple of different logs here. Uh, the, the log relay, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Then I have this other one every five minutes called refresh sensor. Because I don't have a lot of data for the ThingSpeak, I'm only logging that data every five minutes, which is fine. If you want to log this more frequent, you sure can. Because I'm using my own MQTT server through the node red, I can do that a lot more frequent. So that's why I have this set to every minute. Here's our refresh sensor. This is going to do two things. It's going to push out through MQTT the last uh, temperature reading. And that temperature reading takes place every 10 seconds. And then the second thing it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and create uh, a connection to the ThingSpeak server. And it's going to upload each of these data points. I'm sending the temperature, the humidity, and I'm also sending the current uh, relay on and off temperature, and then the state of the, temp of the relay. Uh, these are more just for debugging, or that way I can also graph to see how closely was the temperature to what it was supposed to be within the room. Uh, the ThingSpeak has a, a, a separate client, but uh, I'm just pushing this out through a, a standard web connection. Uh, very straightforward to do. Uh, they make it really easy to push data into their platform. This log relay, this is the one that's going just to the MQTT server, uh, so this runs more frequent. Uh, and I'm only doing a couple things. One, I'm setting the temperature and the humidity. That way we can get them refreshed and update. And then I'm also printing out to the screen, but also sending as part of a status what the current relay state is and what it thinks the on and off temperatures are, and then what the last temperature is. That way, for debugging purposes, I can keep a close eye on that. Here's our check relay function. Uh, this is going to do a couple of things. Uh, it's going to do a little bit of data validation. I do get some errors from time to time. Uh, on this sensor. So I don't know if it's my specific sensor or if that's pretty common. So I'm just double checking that. And if it does get an error, uh, it does turn the relay off just for safety reasons. Uh, and then here it's just going to go ahead and publish what, it, what the current state is. That way I can keep track of whether it's on or off. Um, and this is just doing some simple checks, uh, what the temperature, um, what the on off temperature is, and is it within the range. And then it will adjust accordingly, uh, and it's going to set these as inactive, meaning it has an error, it doesn't know what it's supposed to be doing. And then down here, this is the actual check for the last temperature reading, and this is what's going to turn the relay on and off based on whether or not the temperature is too high or too low. Uh, so you can see very, very straightforward, doesn't require a lot of logic at all. All right, let's take a quick look at the ThingSpeak dashboard. Uh, this is just showing a couple of different graphs, and I don't have anything fancy right now. Um, there's a lot more that you can do with this data. This is logging uh, the last 120 data points about five minutes apart, and it's just putting them on a graph here. So this is the temperature, and then this over here is the humidity. Uh, you can see somewhere around here the, the temperature turned on in the morning in the house. Uh, this device is not actually hooked up to a, the relay is not hooked up to anything. So right now it's just essentially recording the temperature and then it's attempting to turn the relay on and off, but it, it's not actually controlling anything. And then these two data points here are indicating whether the, well, this one's the relay on and this is the low temperature and this is the, the high temperature. So this is just logging for data purposes. That way we can look to see how closely the actual temperature is to where it's supposed to be set. This right here is a very simple node red dashboard. Uh, this one does have a little bit of interactivity on it as well because I can separately set the on and off temperature right here using these little buttons. 
and then I can request a, a refresh from the sensor or a refresh from the switch. And then right here you can see the current, or this is the last, the last temperature and the last humidity. So if I press this refresh button, uh, we should see those numbers just uh, ever so slightly. Uh, once it gets the data back. And then I'm showing right here uh, on off one, whether or not the relay is on or currently off. You can see it's on right now, but since that relay is not plugged into anything, it, it isn't going to do anything. Uh, but you can see here right on the far, far end here is when the heater turned, when the furnace turned on in the morning, and you can see it just fluctuates a little bit. If I had this sensor set up to a heater or a light or something like that right adjacent to it, you'd be able to see it keep that temperature very, very consistent. So there you have it. There's the entire project. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Uh, the node red is just using the MQTT server in order to send and receive data. Uh, it's not doing anything fancy in here. Uh, these buttons just submit a uh, or do a publish, uh, and then these are all just set up as a uh, individual subscribe or a publish. So hope you enjoyed the project. Let me know if you have any questions.